stories are a fun way for us to learn new things. They help us imagine big, big things, but we have no stories. She may not have to worry about stories anymore. Fifty-four-year-old Modoni Galland is on a mission. She wants a book in every Kenyan's hand. Passionate about the written word, Modoni is one of the founders of Story Moja. One of the most recent initiatives by the organization is to start a hundred libraries across the country. Ninety-eight percent of schools, you know, public schools and low-cost uh, private schools, simply do not have libraries. So the likelihood of you throwing, uh, I mean, finding a library in a school is infinitesimally small unless it's a high cost private school where, you know, maybe the teachers have woken up and really understood that this is, this is not just a question of at reading for pleasure. This is reading for literacy. You know, it's like a, storybooks are like textbooks for language. Mudoni points to a 2014 study by Uwezo, a non-governmental organization with an interest in education that concluded among pupils enrolled in class 7, 2 in 10 do not have class 2 literacy and numeracy competencies. Why do we allow this to continue? And, I, and that really upsets me because... We react to these public problems in a very private way. What we do is we put up a high wall around our house to keep out those people we have refused to educate. We keep, you know, we keep dogs, we keep guards. Why? Because we, are, we know that those people have read just enough to understand that fundamentally we are an unfair society. With over 20 titles to her name, Mudoni wants more and more children to read storybooks. If children read storybooks, in fact, read storybooks from the time like your baby is one year old, you spend 30 minutes a day reading with that child for five years, by the time they have read for, you've read with them for 30 minutes a day for five years, they jump a year in their reading ability. But she has not always been about books. Modoni had a high-flying job as an advertising researcher before plunging into the world of the written word by chance, you might say. In 1999, her husband was posted to Cairo. She left her corporate job to accompany him. The first day I wrote a story, I knew this is it. And it wasn't just that I was transported. It's everything clicked inside my head that this is what I was put on earth for. When she returned to Kenya, Modoni wanted to take her writing to a new level. Together with her friends, they flipped a new page and began Story Moja, an outfit that celebrates African writing. All was well, but for one detail, they had published their new books in 2007 and the country was barely holding together as political violence took its toll. Oh my God. That first year, we hardly had any sales. We managed to persuade Uchumi to stock our books and, and Nakumat. And literally every weekend, I used to be Nakumat or Uchumi, just telling people like those Limara girls. And there, those Nivia girls. <laughs> Hello, my name is Madani. Have you read a Kenyan book lately? I am the author of this book. Will you, won't you try one and support a Kenyan writer? I mean, literally, it was just amazing. <laughs> And I, Modoni chose to take the lessons and learn from them. The good thing with, with having such a baptism, you know it really forces you to think, why are you doing it? Beyond finance, why does this matter to you? But there was something, I, I can't even explain what it was. It was just a clear understanding that my purpose in life really was to promote reading. And she hasn't tired. Modoni has been knocking on doors, engaging schools and even the government, interesting them on the virtue of a rich reading culture. Our town is facing a huge problem. While there is time set aside for children to read books in the library, often, according to Modoni, that time is used by schools to catch up on revision or homework. They seem to think that if you cram, you're better off. And that is so foolish in this day and age. It is beyond foolish. We are really harming our children by teaching them that authority has all the answers, by teaching them that the answers are just facts that you can memorize. 
I'm sorry, you can get an A and still fail in life. It's not because I want children to do badly. Of course, I want children to do well. But it's more important that children learn how to think. One of her key achievements, she says, is holding one of the biggest read-aloud marathons in the country, all aimed at raising awareness about books. We want to get to a million because we think then you have a generation of children who've participated, who know what it's about, who really can grow up with that strength to say, actually, yes, we are readers. And because schools are closing, and you perhaps are wondering what next for the long holidays, how about thinking about Mudoni's advice that reading is fun indeed? For Citizen Weekend, I am Anne Mawade.